welcome to the Chicago Clubhouse Podcast. Once again, this is the sports show where we think we know what we're talking about, but no, no, we don't. My name is Emilio Bucks, and I'm here today with, as usual, the lady of the clubhouse, Miss Kristen Pertit. Hello. And rounded out the trio, we have Southside Zone, the notorious T Nick. What's up? All right, we got T Nick in the building doing this T Nick thing. All right, so uh, we're trudging along through this thing, um, th- th- you know, just when we think it can't get worse. Just like everything in this year, I guess, right? Um, the Bears managed to get worse. Uh, so before we even jump right into that, l- l- let's jump in on a good, positive, informative note with our special guest this week. Uh, this gentleman, he is a former All-American coming out of Ole Miss, who uh, went in the third round to our very own Chicago Bears, where he played on the old line for, uh, I think it was seven years? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he's here to talk about some things he's doing now. He's, he's doing some coaching now. Please give a warm clubhouse welcome to Mr. Terrence Metcalf. Hey, man, thank you guys for having me on the yeah. clubhouse, brother. Appreciate oh, that. Thank you for being here, man. Thank you for being here. We, uh, we, we were just commenting on uh, Terrence's classroom he's got going in the back. Like, we'd love to see yeah, that, uh, <laughs> that, that home learning, get that home classroom on, you know. Oh, yeah, man. Kids. That's beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful, man. So uh, uh, I'd like to like find out some more about what you're currently doing besides being a teacher. You're also teaching football because uh, you're coaching. Uh, yeah. Can you tell us that? Because I don't, I don't know much about like your path coaching. Can you tell us a little bit about that and what led you to uh, well, really coaching? Well, coaching after um, I, when I re- retired from the league, man, my son was uh, sixth, sixth grade. And so I got into coaching. Uh, around that time, kind of just working with his peewee team. But then as he progressed, I kind of got up, got outside of my degree. I was doing human resource and marketing uh, while playing. And then I came home and I decided I'll just shut that down and go full time. Uh, just kind of okay. my way of giving back was kind of just uh, making myself available to the community that I uh, moved back to. And so I moved back to Oxford, Mississippi, where Ole Miss was. And I really didn't know that the community was that engaged in the kids until I got out there and I started learning. And so that's, uh, I kind of put myself out there and uh, started working with not just my son, but probably about 15 to 20 kids in the community. And in doing that, I just saw the program from Pee Wee and the guys going to middle school, never losing a football game, going to a high school. And really the only game they lost was the North half championship. And then three straight years, we lost the uh, state title. And uh, okay. once that finished, man, my son went over to Ole Miss. <laughs> For some strange reason, they didn't bring me over. So I took a job at another uh, junior college in the state so that I could still make myself available on Saturday. So that's kind of, that's been my coaching, um, the coaching world for me, but I uh, interjected myself also in the recruiting process. Uh, back when, back in 09, I started a recruiting service uh, called rebels247.com, covering Ole Miss. And uh, during that time, man, I kind of learned the process, learned what the ins and outs was, the dirty side of it, and the good side of it. And uh, right on. But once I, once I got into coaching, in 2013, I sold my interest uh, to my partners and uh, – Went full time coaching, man, and um, and then when my okay. <laughs> so I'm like, it's been good for me, man. Right on, man. That that sounds yeah. great, and and it's so funny, like so, like if if anybody doesn't know his son, he also plays football. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> could, could you tell us who uh, your son's name? Just just well, my son, I know the the everybody knows him as DK Metcalf, but we call him Kalen Metcalf by his full name. You know, number right. fourteen That's with the Seattle Seahawks. Seahawks. Yes, sir, man. You must be uh, very proud right now. Oh man! <laughs> I mean, it, it, anyways, regardless of whether he was doing what he was doing, but like, right, right. I'm, 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 I'm excited to see what's going on. You know, uh, how God is moving with him, and 
you know, I don't know, I don't know the schedule program or the topics, but we can talk about it. However, but I'm excited that he is able to do what he's doing. You know, absolutely, man. Yeah. That's great. And, and it's, I mean, he comes from, you know, obviously a long line. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing. For sure. For sure. Mm-hmm. Another thing. Um, so, T. Nick, you know, I thought. Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. T. Nick, you want to uh, jump in? Yeah. Um, you know, players are always talking about, well, we're going to talk about your career with the Bears a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, players are always talking about how hard of a transition it is from one coach to another. So I remember that you went from Big Jerron style to Lovey Smith style. Mm-hmm. Was that a hard transition, or do players just say that because they're making an excuse why they're not performing well? Yeah, I really think it's it's not a hard transition, and the reason being, if you understand the concepts. I'm an offensive guard, I'm an offensive tackle, I'm a center. Only thing changes is the terminology. And so if you know how to group things and get the concept of what the coach wants you to do, I don't think it's a hard concept. But my time there, my first five years there, we went through three offensive coordinators. Mm -hmm. So we went through three different offensive Mm systems. And I think we had about my first three years, we had like seven quarterbacks that we shuffle things through until Kyle Orton and Rex Grossman came in there in 2005, 2006 and kind of settled things down. Um, but that was, I would say that's, that was the most difficult part, man. It, transitioning from major college football, and I can say I played in the SEC. And so every, every Saturday I'm going against a first-round draft pick, you know, out of Georgia, out of Alabama, out of Arkansas, out of Florida, all these guys, man. And you you never have a letdown. And so transitioning to Chicago, we had, you know, we were coming off a great 2001 season. Um, and I, I felt like I thought, you know, prior to going to Champaign, we was going to have a pretty big opportunity in the NFC North. Uh, we were always competitive in our division, but we just struggled, um, you know, once you got outside of that and you get into the playoffs. It's kind of kind of a letdown, and that whole champagne thing was a <laughs> that was an experience in itself, man. Yeah, uh, we'll yeah, that, man. To... yeah. That, that 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 whole first year, we we went in the um we went in the training camp. We lost so many guys uh, in that in that first my first two years to injuries, uh-huh. and you know it just this was a struggle. But I I, I can definitely say that when Lovey came in, he brought a totally different professional feel. Um, to the football field. Man, why they fire Lovey? I cannot answer that, man. You're talking about one of the winningest guys that right. <laughs> that had been yeah. in the program, you know. And yeah. Again, sometimes some Ten people wins. are not ready. You know, regardless of what we think, sometimes some people are not ready to have that. You know, and I don't think I'm out of, out of order. Uh, black head coach. You know what I'm saying? And and Lovey was Lovey proved that he could be successful. He proved that he could get guys to play at a high level. You know, um, and I really can't answer like why they would do that with a guy doing what he was, when, the way he was winning. Yeah, he was ten and six. Yeah, yeah it was a new it was a new GM yeah. that came in right that fired him. Mm-hmm. When, yeah, Phil Emery. Fella, yeah, Phil Emery. Yeah, Phil Emery came yeah. to fire him. Yeah, he fired yeah. Lovey, traded Greg Olson. Yeah, right. Yeah. And yeah, then became yeah, that was crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Oh, yeah, man. It was a struggle. Yeah, that was a struggle, brother. That was yeah, a struggle. Man. Um, so but, I, but you know what? Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, you go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I was just going to say, you know, it's, that's the nature of that business. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I hate the fact that it is what it is. But you can look across the league and just kind of see as the new hires comes in. You know, we can't even – not the fact that they everybody rejects affirmative action and they don't like the fact that, that they feel like, oh, I'm being made to hire this person or that person because of color. And, you know, I'm not going to ever back down from that. I think that's one of the biggest issues. And, you know, that I think one of the best programs uh, around, man, uh, is the Chicago Bears and what they do as far as for the players and the families. But 
again, it, I, I, I can't – if a guy's winning, what else can you say about why would you fire him? So, That's right. right. I, I've, heard, I've heard other former players of, of the organization say, like, yeah, you know, they do right by the players. Oh, yeah. Um, but, uh, but, yeah, at the same time, you, you know, and this – these football families, uh, you know, it's a different sport. And the ownership, that's that really old white money. Oh, yeah. You know, it's a little bit it's different than baseball ownership. It's definitely different than basketball ownership. You know what I mean? That's, uh, oh, yeah. That, that's the billionaire boys club type of, yeah, they, they, they still not trying to let brothers in like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't think that will ever change. You know what yeah. I'm saying? I mean, yeah. un- unless yeah. we start owning teams, yeah. you know. And mm-hmm. again, you look around around the league. New new offensive coordinators. Uh, guys are so young; they don't even have the experience at coaching on that level. And you still uh, give them opportunity just to say he's the youngest uh, head coach ever in in the NFL. I, you know, with all these uh, black guys with so much experience at the coordinator position and doing what they're doing in the league, it just I, I, I it can't be anything else but that to me. Man, what happened with Mike Singletary? Did he get just like blacklisted or what? Like, I mean, not to go too far off topic, but speaking no, 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 no. Coaches who, who I thought was fairly, I thought Singletary was fairly capable. You know, he had yeah. a rough time in San Francisco for a minute, but like, it just seemed like he, they just snatched the opportunities away from him after that. Like, yeah, I, I would definitely agree with you, man. Again, you. When you talk about a rough time, then you got to also look at, okay, the draft classes and how things went with that, you know, and what, what were you basing your foundation on, uh, on? And then how was everybody else around the league? How competitive was everybody else? Because if you look at, the, uh, look at the 49ers now, prior to all the injuries, everybody thought they was going to be able to go back to the, uh, to the Super Bowl. And and that and I think that was one of the biggest things with uh, Singletary, man, like the injuries and things like that. And we don't get those chances to me when yeah. when you have those those things happening to your team. You know, uh, I can go back to Sylvester Croom, who was hired at Mississippi State. And again, I know it's off topic, but I'm talking about a black head oh. coach in the SEC not given an opportunity to build the team how he needed to build the team. After two years, after two seasons, he was gone. Didn't, didn't, didn't mean he was a bad coach or he couldn't get it done. I just knew his time, his timetable wasn't going to be as long as another individual. Right. I, it, it won't be like Mike Leach, Mike, Mike Leach have at Mississippi State now. Right, so, right. We right. always Man, get though. a shorter leash than others. Oh, always. <laughs> Very short. Yep. Very short. Player and yeah. coach. Man, for real, man. That, um, that's, that's a shame. They feel like you're expendable. If you're an expendable guy and you're not producing, you're on a short leash, and that's how it is. You know, we can replace that money, especially before all this guaranteed money was 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 uh was put out there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, this past weekend, Terrence, I heard you on the radio in Chicago on the "Where Are They Now" segment, uh-huh. and uh, you talked a lot about how the Bears, you're like a family. Right. And um, what is it? What was it about those guys? Because I think you were talking to Olin and Patrick Manley at that time. Yeah. So uh-huh. it was about that team that made you guys so close. What was it about them that you still to this day, like when you were talking to them, I could hear the passion that you still have for your teammates. Oh yeah. Well, in that locker room, um, you know, you spend so much so much time away from your family, and you're with those guys, and then. There are things that happen within your families. Uh, tragedies may happen or, you know, simple things like a kid may get sick or somebody may need you to babysit. And we always had each other's back in those situations. Uh, practicing with those guys out there, knowing that regardless of what's happening on the practice field, if we get at each other, we come right back and we're all good in the locker room. Uh, and we always came up with little games and stuff that we would play in the locker room, shooting the basketball in the uh, laundry basket, you know what I'm saying, playing a little baseball with taped up ball and a little stick we'd find just before we go out to practice, just to have some normalcy uh, right. as, as players because your, your time is so consumed and uh, you're on, under so much pressure with everybody watching. You got to make sure you're doing things the right way. Uh, and when I say doing things the right way, I'm talking about from a knowledge standpoint. 
you're studying all the time, you're in the meeting room longer than what people expect or, or people actually know about, because we're on, on the, we're on the practice field two and a half hours every day, but we get there from seven to uh, six o'clock, most of us, you know, most of us would, but just that camaraderie with each other, man, I never had a feeling like, oh, oh, this guy's arrogant because he's making this much money. Um, or this guy's arrogant because they're talking about him this much. And if they was, you had somebody in the locker room that would make jokes on him and, and bring him down to, uh, to level. So yeah, I was going to ask, were there any like, okay, who was the biggest clown, but then was there anyone who just, you could just never break them to uh, join into maybe some of the fun or whatever? Well, I, I really can't cause everybody wanted, well, I say Ted Washington when I first got there as a rookie, he was one of the biggest uh, uh, jokesters, funny guy. I can remember as a rookie uh, at practice, my first practice in pads were against him as a guard next to Olin Cruz. And uh, Ted Washington goes, hey, Olin, tell that rook don't put, put his hands on me. And I'm like, yo, how am I going to block this cat if he talking about don't put his hands? And I'm a grimy cat, you know what I'm saying? I'm a young cat, grimy. I'm fighting anybody, you know, that come across me. And so... But this is a guy I respect. He's been in the league 16 years. I watched him transition from the Buffalo Bills uh, to the uh, Chicago Bears. And then I know his whole career moving from there, going to the Cleveland Browns, going to the uh, New England Patriots. So I'm knowing this is a legend to me. And I got to go out here and block this cat that told me don't put my hands on. And so, <laughs> you know, then he came back, you know, I'm just playing with you all that. Right, right, uh, but right. no, everybody kind of, everybody kind of, Mike Brown, uh, Brian Erlacher, uh, Peanut Tillman, when he came in the next year, he was a real funny cat. Uh, but the, the craziest one, we signed Anthony Adams. Uh, uh, I mean, he, 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 he still bring crazy, it. Man. He, oh, yeah, he's he bringing it. Every day he's bringing it, man. So, he, but he, he was bringing it like that every day when he was on the team. Yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> I never saw him down. Never saw him down, man. He was dancing all the time, man, making jokes. You could block him, he's making jokes. So it was that. It, it was. Just, I'm serious. It was just that. Like I'm talking about. Even the, the years we was getting our head beat in. <laughs> and I mean, I mean, thank y'all for surviving during those times, man. Oh man, dude. <laughs> yeah. But it, it was cool though, man. I, I can't. I can't complain, man. It was. You know, I, I would have loved to have been the starter all the time, man. But some guys got to play that backup role, and I was blessed to be that guy uh, that knew multiple positions on the offensive line. Mm -hmm. um, and for some reason, that's where they wanted me. They were saying, oh, we're going to pay you this money, but you're going to be our backup, you know. Right. And so – Hey, man, you, you you live the dream, though, man. Oh, like, yeah. Make no, no oh, mistake yeah. about it, man. Like, oh, yeah. You know, when, when you live the dream, and you don't get into, like, measuring, like, oh, I didn't start. Oh, yeah. No, man, you you, you, get, you got to the show. You, you did yeah, it, man. man. So, yeah. And that, that's, and crazy, that's where man. I tell most of these cats out here, too. A lot of these guys, not they, they, they think, oh, I got to get out there. I got to have my name here. I'm like, you better make sure if you get a free agent shot, you make yourself known so that you can last. Uh, there's a ton of guys that get out there and they, all they do is play special teams for 15 years, you know, right. and, 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 and don't nobody, they don't make the pro bowl. Don't nobody know who they are, but they got 15 years in the league, 15 years vested in the league. 15 years, you know, and so can't nobody ever take that away from you. Exactly. You know? And you got, got NFL check for 15 years. Uh, you better yeah. believe it, you know, Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and better learn too. Better <laughs> learn because you ain't gonna get it but number fifteen. Oh, you got man. about sixty more to live. You know? Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's yeah, crazy because when y'all when y'all retire, you're like, okay, uh now I have like this I have the, the rest of the seventy percent of my life left now so right. to live like, okay, what do I do now? Yeah, yeah. But that that's awesome that you, you got involved with the kids, you went back. Uh, mm -hmm. to, to where you're from, and, and that's amazing. Like, like that's always great about sports and what they can do to to energize the community and to energize families and, and kids. You know. So, mm -hmm. speaking of, I don't know, energize. What's it gonna take for this current Bears team to 
to to end the season with some energy, like can they end this on any sort of respectable note? Well, you know, we're always judged by what we do against Green Bay, to me, you know, and, and that's that's one of the biggest challenges. And Green Bay, we know they got a passing attack. They run the ball well. And as we saw this past weekend, man, when they're clicking on special teams and that defense is rolling, it's tough. And one of the biggest things that I found uh, for us, our defense was our drive. And with those guys on defense, they were, I know that Super Bowl year, we went out there, we averaged, if you, if you really pay attention, we averaged like 10 points a game as an offense. Yeah. But the defense yeah. also averaged the, about the same amount. So if we right. got there, they would tell and us. Then with, hey, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they, they would normally tell us, hey, man, get us 10, and we, we'll win this. And That's so right. if if that same fire don't come about on the defense, because we see your struggles on offense, <laughs> that's going to be tough right. offensively. And you got weapons, but it's, it's difficult. It's tough with when the O-line struggles and the quarterback struggles. Care who you got at receiver or running back, it's going to be difficult. Yeah. It don't matter. Nah, nah. No, nah, but I would never, man. That's my, that's my. I got a, I got a root for the Seahawks, but y'all know where the blood is now. Yeah. 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 Speaking we, of that, um, life, that <laughs> O-line and the struggles and you're a coach and you coached O-line and you know O-line techniques. You know, Olin Krutz talks about Effetti uh, and we saw on that strip sack and, and Olin Krutz talks about his technique all the time. Mm -hmm. If you were coaching on the Bears and you notice the inconsistency of both of the tackles with their technique mm -hmm. in trying to help protect the quarterback and the, the running game, what would you do to work on their consistency so that Fetty doesn't open up his hips too soon to allow that rusher to get there? Well, one of the biggest things, they try to get, take care of all that prior to the season. And well, if Fetty actually was a, a Seattle Seahawks guard this last year, before he transitioned to Chicago. And that was one of his biggest struggles is in pass protection. Everybody know he can, he'll have the, 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 the runs, the run step down, but that you, nobody can deny that. I can't get on here. Cause you know, I don't never like to talk about another guy and what he does on the football field, but you can't deny what y'all seeing on television, you know? Mm -hmm. And so in coaches mind and in players mind, once I start, I'm the starter forever. And I never could understand that because in college, if I'm making mistakes, they're going to pull me, you know. And no, you'll tell a wide receiver, you'll tell a quarterback, you'll tell a running back. Never make the same mistake twice. But for us as offensive linemen, they don't like to interchange those guys and bring new people in unless it's a major injury. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing you can do to help an individual's technique during the season. Because he's under so much stress and everything is moving. In Monday, if you lose, you'll go in on Monday, just watch film. It's on that guy to do extra. On Tuesday is your day off. On Wednesday, like I said, you've got two hours on the field. Thursday, two hours. Friday's a walkthrough. And so that's that's where the fans like looking at this and, and you would be like, okay, why don't you just take him out? If I take him out, then I gotta put his back up in. So if he's not doing well. That backup really isn't where he needs to be because he's not getting the reps. Right. And so there's really nothing during the season that can that can mm -hmm. fix a guy. He has to fix it within himself, you know. And I'm quite sure I know Fetty thinks about that stuff all the time. And when he make a mistake, those players always know. I, I can tell you every mistake I made from my rookie year to now, you know. And but there's no fixing it. Okay. This is this is where intestinal fortitude comes in and say I gotta mm -hmm. I gotta get this right within myself, and if I can't get it right, then everybody got to deal with it because they 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 not gonna uh, to me they're not gonna bench it because that's not the norm. Right. Yeah. Now, let me ask you another practice question. We always would hear that like Mitch and the offense they had a great practice, great practice, great practice, excellent, greatest that we've seen. Then we can take them out. <laughs> And they were bad. And then later on in the week, the media talked to um, Anthony Miller, and he mentioned 
I wish we would do the things we did in practice. I wish we ran the same plays in practice. When yeah. we in the game. Have you ever been a part yeah. of that where you had this whole game plan in practice and then you got to the game and the coach was like, nah, we're going to run something different. Well, it really doesn't. It doesn't. I don't think the coaches just say, okay, I'm going to change it when the defense is giving you problems and the guys on the field doesn't handle those problems the correct way, then you got to, you deviate from going deep into your game plan and you try to stay as basic as you can to make sure, okay, if I just do what I know they already know, then they should be okay. And a lot of the guys will say, well, open it up, you know, get the, push the ball downfield more or run. I know we would scream, run the ball more because we threw, interceptions <laughs> like crazy <laughs> when I was there, but <laughs> we would always scream, run the ball. I got Rex. Got a, I love Rex. <laughs> <laughs> you got a big physical offensive lineman, run the ball. You know, and so I, I really – and then you got to always remember during this COVID time, who are they practicing against? You know, there's no pressure. No, Yeah, you're, gonna make, you're not going to make mistakes when the defense isn't getting after you. Because they've really done practice down to make right, sure right. guys stay healthy during this time because they miss so much time during um, during the um, preseason because we didn't have it. Mm -hmm. They didn't have it. So especially when they start talking about, oh, we had such a great practice, all you didn't do was make mistakes. <laughs> you know, so your consistency is there, but there's no pressure. Um, the running back isn't, isn't getting touched. The wide receivers, isn't getting, they're not getting contested. And the old linemen, we're not, we're not suited, especially this late in the season. They're not putting no pads and stuff like that. Yeah, I was about to say, do guys even wear pads in practice? No, like not at season? all. Yeah. No, no, yeah. no, not at all. No. Yeah. So we should always take that with a grain of salt when they say it was a great practice. Like, well, like every time. Okay. Oh, <laughs> every time. Wow. Unless, unless you can, you, it's just guaranteeing you it should minimize the mental errors that you see on the field. But then if I don't, if I don't get the same game speed, then how do I know I'm ready for the, that type of game speed? Right. Yeah. Right. And I know you just, said yeah. uh, you don't you don't necessarily like to talk about what players are not doing on the field, but we got to talk about this line a little bit. Yeah. Are these players? Would you keep any of these players if if you had if you had a choice to get rid of all of them? And I know you might not want to answer it. If you don't, no, that's fine. you ain't got to. Yeah. But would you keep any of them? Well, my, my biggest thing is this season, 2020, threw us all a wrench. And so the guys really didn't have the proper time. Now, I know they all pros, you know, and we expect that everybody, when the, when the, when the uh, lights turn on, you got to get ready and go. Mm -hmm. So you, you can at least be competitive, you know. Uh, I would definitely just, you know, I would give guys – another opportunity uh but you see what you see and you know what you're getting you know and it's either going to be the guys the o-line coach or something they got to make sure that those guys are prepared uh to perform at a high level next season so i wouldn't say i'm getting rid of them because 2020 even in college football they're telling guys well this year don't even count against you mm -hmm. you know right. and in the world where your dollars make sense in the NFL, everybody watching you, bro. And you get paid all this money, so you don't get the excuses of a college student. And that's one of the biggest, biggest things these guys got to deal with from a scrutiny standpoint. I don't care what, what's going on in your life. I know when the lights come on, get ready to play, homie. And that's all I care. That's all, you know. And from a fan, I'm looking and I, I'm, I'm trying not to critique uh, the Seattle Seahawks O-line. You know, when I see something going on, but I always remember what if he was in that situation. And so right. kind of pull back and stay humble. And then I started watching the wide receivers and seeing what they do. Uh, pop pop is on the horn with Pete Carroll. Like, hey, <laughs> I need to throw another man out there with my boy. <laughs> so Terrence, yeah, who's auditioning cool, bro. for the Bears? Who's auditioning for another team? Say it, say it again. Auditioning for another team, in your opinion. Who's de who's destined for another team? Who's audit? Well, you say that too, but yeah. who's who's auditioning <laughs> for another team right now? 
Yeah, you try to make it tough on me, man. I'm, I'm really, <laughs> I really can't say that. <laughs> I no, knew you were gonna say that. Plead the fifth. I knew you were gonna say that. I have huh? the fifth, Mr. Metcalf. Plead the fifth. <laughs> well, well, I can say this. You see where the trouble spots are, and in order for me to keep my job as a head coach, I'll have to make changes during this off season. So, with, uh, being a coach or a player that's not getting their job done. That individual is nervous because he know, you know, it's a revolving door and there's so many guys out there who didn't even get a chance to have a pro day that are really good football players and so many vets that's out there to where they put these guys on IR, keeping them around and things like that. So it, 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 we, we both know, we all know that it's going to be some changes made, but, to, you know, put a label on an individual, that, that coach is in, got to get it right. He's the, the player coaching the GM. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you oh, as yeah. the player, you know if you're one of the players, like, yeah, I'm I'm playing this out for somebody else to oh, yeah. pick me up. I mean, and that, that's – Getting some good game feel. Right. So, that's, that. why, yeah. that's why I'm kind of in favor of them keeping Mitch out there. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, first of yeah. all, uh, for, first of all, Nick is terrible. But also, <laughs> it's like, okay, you, you know, uh, you know, Mitch isn't coming back. Let the boy get some get some more reps in. <laughs> yeah, know, get some more footage because he he is definitely auditioning. Yes, for he is. Team. You know what <laughs> I mean. And that's not and that's not even like to be disrespectful towards him. It's just right. The no. business is what it is, and everybody knows like they didn't extend yeah. him, and it didn't really happen for him this year. So it's just you know it yeah. is what it is. You know. Uh, hey, I got my phone him. call one day. I mean, every place. Oh, wow. yeah. 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 Yeah, that's yeah. right. You're going to get your yeah, phone you call, right? so hey, it yeah. doesn't matter. Every situation yeah. isn't for everybody, so yeah. you realize yeah. that. You do your best to have someone pick you up because, like you mentioned, Terrence, um, Mr. Metcalf, that, you know, you're looking for longevity as well. So, yeah. you know, you got to do what you have to do, whether it's here, because this isn't a right fit for a lot of these players. A lot of these players, yeah. especially the same coaching staff comes back. Yeah. And, you know, speaking of coaching, when they thought that one of your favorite coaches was the problem with the offensive line and they switched them, and we see that was not the problem. Right, right. And maybe they didn't need to make that coaching change, but, um, <laughs> you know, you just, you just, everyone isn't meant for, meant for every system. And unfortunately, right. our staff, also didn't want to change their system to fit their players. Right. So at this point, you know, some people on this team, like an Allen Robinson, et cetera, are probably okay with auditioning. Yeah. Players. They're ready but to if go. If you're Allen Robinson, they're... make sure you find the first down marker when you're auditioning. <laughs> yeah. you know? Oh, my God. That's another story. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I well, can't imagine again, he even wants to be back, you know, at this point. But. Well, and again, it goes back to, to the coaches. No coach want to change his system. Uh, I, I know I, I found that out big time in the NFL. I got a system. You're, you're drafted here. You come in. I don't want to hear anything. You said, this is the play I'm calling. You got to run it how I want to call. You got, these are my terminologies. You're going to use this terminology. And so they, a lot of these teams, nobody really changes their system for their players. If you look around the league, when a team is struggling passing, they don't automatically go to the run game. They try to stick to what they're doing and try to get over the hump, you know. And that's for, I, I, you know, I never realized that to be frustrating for the fans, you know, until I'm sitting on the sideline and I'm looking at you, 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 you blurt out, what are they doing? Well, I'm following <laughs> my system is what I'm doing. Right. You know, <laughs> and oh, so man, dude. we're That's still we're insight. Bears fans, so it's like run the ball. Why aren't you running oh, the ball? You're at the Feed seventeen the yard beach. line, run. Feed the right, beast. Right. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, man. What are you doing? Yeah. Speaking yeah. of beast, speaking yeah. of beast, yeah, you created a beast, Tan. Yeah. You created a beast. Well, man, I Tay is it. a beast, man. I appreciate so, it, brother. Who has more of a beast mentality when it comes to playing football, you or DK? Well, I kind of, I would have to say, man, like I did it all by myself. I carried the attitude by myself based on just angry as a kid. And so I started playing ball, you know, and that's where you can get your frustration out on the field, in the weight room. And I can just say that naturally, man, it's, he just, 
he just listened. He worked hard. He treated people right. He trusts God. Um, you know, he's a kid, but he, he's physical out there at the wide receiver position. And I, and we worked on hands. We talked about old linemen, you know, blocking, getting your hands inside. So that's something that he, he, he loved doing from middle school to high school to Ole Miss to now. So it's nothing fake, you know, and, and he literally wants to be one of the best to ever play, man. That's what I love about him. He got his, got his goals written down right by his bed every day he see it. And, you know, these are things that I didn't do. I didn't have that, that figure in my life to teach me, here's the process. And so mm-hmm. when he's been around the process his entire life, you know, and it ain't, you know, I, I would say he has it because he's been taught to be it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And he has that little Michael Jordan personality because when Schwartz mentioned uh, Megatron and he wasn't there yet, he took that personal, just like Michael yeah. Schwartz. <laughs> yeah. he's out on the field and let you know yeah. I'm working towards yeah. Megatron. <laughs> yeah, and I mean that's one of his that's one of his favorite guys, you know. And uh, he and Megatron talk, and he's just, you know, and uh, he's good. He just wanted to let him know, you know, I wasn't meaning nothing negative towards you. It's just, you know, who is this guy? Right. You know, with all his ups and downs, who is this cat? To, you know, before a game, don't even talk to me. You know what I'm saying? I don't want one of your players talking to me or the coaches. So, and it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? Don't just be mindful of what you say regardless of what the intent was. Just be mindful of what you say. And now I've been taught that since I was in high school. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't talk about the opposite team. You don't even make mention of them because you don't want to give them fuel, right. you know. Yeah. Bulletin board material. Yeah. So many people do that. I don't know. I think they must like that. The game right, right. Well, yeah. well, some people like to egg, you know what I'm saying? Some people like to dig at people and yeah. egg things on, but just back it up, you know? And, and that's anything we do. Back it up. You make a statement, back it up. And, and that's it. Sure. You know? Hey, that's Terrence, sure. do you ever call up, uh, do you ever call up Greg Austin? Like, man, look out for uh, DK. Look out for my son. <laughs> Nah, nah, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. That kid, that kid. I, I visit out there pretty uh, frequently, and he had his head on, bro. He, he's, he's pretty decent, bro. Like trying to do things the right way and making sure he represent, you know, represent his name well, you know. And that's what's right a on. blessing. Okay. You know, I ain't got no negative story I can drop a dime to anybody. I'm just a blessed pops, bro. That's excited to see what God is doing in this young cat's life and how he moving, you know That's what I'm awesome. saying? And how he's creating and stacking his plans and stuff like that. And I see like, when people really, people really, uh, I don't know how religious anybody is. I ain't no religious cat, I'm spiritual and I know that God is real. And so when I preach that to that cat, he takes it and, and he does things the right way. You know, he'll still get at somebody. So I don't want to be wanting nobody to get it wrong when I talk about the spiritual side, because mm-hmm. if you get at me, I'm going to get at you. You know what I'm saying? Right. It's just real talk. And uh, I ain't no turn the other cheek I mean, you, you can, you can right. be spiritual and, you know, whoop some ass. Savage. Okay. <laughs> okay, okay. You can be a spiritual I savage. savage. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> I, I don't know if I can say the sentence enhancers. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, spiritual savage. We're not monitors. Yeah. Yeah. Terrence, yeah. you know, one thing I always ask uh, players, uh, former players, what was your welcome to the NFL moment? Uh, at Chicago, you know, we used to run the, uh, on kickoff return as a rookie, we would run the wedge. It's outlawed now. You can't run the wedge anymore. Oh, yes. But uh, Lito Shepard, both of us was rookies at the time, and he came flying down like a bullet. It hit me smack dab under my chin. I never played special teams before, never been in a wedge. Knocked me out, but I played it out, played it off like I wasn't feeling woozy. Walked over to their sideline. They turned me, turned me around. Oh, and I walked man. back to our sideline. And from wow. that moment on, I never, ever allowed anybody to hit me first. You know? Got you. Yeah. Wow. That, that's, that's a welcome. But those are facts. That's true. <laughs> right. well, yeah, that was a big one. Yeah. <laughs> he went to the wrong sideline. <laughs> <laughs> right, that. <laughs> I was like, man, I just need a doctor. I don't care who yeah. needs a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but you know, back then, you didn't report that. I didn't report that. 
<laughs> right, right. I right. went right back out there on the next kickoff return. You know what I'm you saying? You definitely had a concussion, probably though, right? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was something. Well, that's good that they do that, man. Well, hey, man, like uh, I want to let you know, we really appreciate you coming on and taking taking time out of your schedule uh, to man. talk with us, man. Oh, those are some great stories. Um, it, it's an honor for us. We're just, you know, we think man, we know same. what we're talking about, but we same don't know here. Oh, same man, here, brother, man. You. I appreciate y'all. And I, oh, you man. know, I was I was taking a. Uh, uh, I was taking an exam when you when, when I got the text from Terrence. So I apologize for any oh. if I'm late or anything like that. All man. good. No worries man. at all. all yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. All good. No worries, yeah. man. We just appreciate you coming on here, and you, and you came in and and you gave us some good time, man. So yes. but, uh, I appreciate hey, man, y'all, bro. We're gonna, we're gonna let you go, man. And uh, we'd love appreciate to have you on next season. Hopefully, we'll be talking differently about uh, <laughs> the Bears. So I don't know, you know, it's a, a year is a long way away. Yeah, man. And so, and like we said, we'll expect some changes. But again, uh, Clubhouse, again, for Mr. Terrence uh, Metcalf uh, here again. And uh, thank you, sir. Big ups, bro. Thank, thank you. y'all for having All me, right. bro. Appreciate you, bro. Yeah, yeah bro. Right. Thank man. you, sir. Yeah, bro. Thank you. Anytime. Uh, so just to turn the page a little bit from uh, football, we could throw in some of our other teams a little bit. Uh, training camp has started uh, in the NBA. At, wow, I can't believe that it's basketball season already again. I think it's like 70 days since the finals. Yeah, I, it's, <laughs> I didn't believe it's been, it's a, that was a quick 70 days. Everything in 2020 has been crazy. Yeah. You can say that again. <laughs> Yeah, everything in 2020 has been crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the, the Bulls with the new coach, seeing uh, players actually being developed by a coach finally. You know, that hasn't happened since Tibbs left. So it'll be good to see uh, what this coaching staff can get out of these uh, players, established players, players who kind of regressed last year like marketing. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, some other news, some news on uh, on the south side with the uh, with the White Sox. Uh, you know, they signed uh, Adam Eaton to a one year deal. Um, my uncle, your father, Christian, will love that. I don't know why he hates Adam Eaton. I'm not sure why. Uh, I know he hated AJ Przinsky, but I get that. But Adam Eaton, um, he's won. He won with uh, the Nationals. So. Uh, be a good returning uh, clubhouse veteran presence in there who who knows how to win. And last time I saw him here, he was pretty speedy. Um, I don't know if he's, you know, that's usually the first thing to go. And he's been gone a while. But, um, hey, we had we got Lucas Giolito for him, you know, in the end pretty much. So it's, uh, you know, it, it was a good deal. So. Well, can I ask you a question really quick about Adam Eaton? Sure, sure. Why do why are so many Sox fans upset that he's back? Was he he was I guess he he made Robin Ventura mad at times. Like what did he do? Um, I don't know. I just heard he wasn't the best uh, clubhouse guy. You know okay. how they say that. You okay. know what I mean? And you never really know exactly what that means. Um, you know, it was a very different team. You know when he was last here. Okay. You know, yeah. Uh, he was never even here with Ricky Renteria, was he? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. Yeah, I think he was traded even back when it was still Ventura. So mm-hmm. um, besides for like Abreu, I think. See, that's, that's probably one of the only guys still in that clubhouse uh, okay. since he left. So um, I guess we'll find out, you know what I mean? Like how he'll fit in with this young core, you know. If you can get an older guy who's so productive, who's one, that can only help a young team because oh uh, yeah, yeah because that young team they they needed that experience so like you know yeah and he knows what it no surprise he knows what it takes to win a World Series absolutely he's been in the he's been into the show so, Lance Lynn oh that was yeah. oh okay that was uh yesterday okay uh, oh it was yesterday yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's I, I was like oh there's somebody new wow, even I knew that. Oh, oh, get out of here. Yeah, well, you didn't know who he was. 
You didn't oh, know no, that was that. No, I, I didn't know who he was. I'm just saying that I knew it was yesterday. Now, that okay. is, that's a good pickup, a veteran, dependable yeah. pick, pitcher who uh, had like a 330 ERA yeah. last year. So, And he's durable. You know why he's mm -hmm. durable? Because he's fat. Exactly. <laughs> when it, Rod Beck, Rod Beck, remember when Rod Beck said you can't pull fat? Yeah. <laughs> Bartolo Colon. He's a little <laughs> butterball. David Wells. And 48 pitching. Yeah. Still got the... Got the stuff. Yes. You know, he's not anybody for our sister. He's got the stuff. All these injuries happen when, when players started getting real fit. Muscle, when they were just skinny and fat. Um, Anthony oh, Rizzo, yeah. he lost weight, lost uh, everything. He needs to get back a little chunky and continue yeah. his career. Yeah. So more bad news. Baby Cubs to now adult Cubs or Bears. <laughs> There should just be the adult Cubs. Their <laughs> name should be demoted to the <laughs> Chicago. Let's put that out there. The Chicago adult Cubs or like the Chicago teen Cubs. Like it's not even responsible. This is not even responsible. Adults yeah. Anymore. They're like little koala bears. Yeah. Yeah. Pandas. I, I the bears, they play. Texans. Uh, the Texans. Uh, yeah, Texans, 28, Bears, 12. No, no, no. It'll be the Texans, 28, the Bears, 26, because the Bears' offense can score. Now the defense is garbage. Yeah. Okay. All right. I mean, T. Nick. 31-17. 31-17 Texans. I will be cheering for Deshaun Watson. Uh, I'm not. I'm not rocking with the Bears on Sunday. You know. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, whoa. yeah. It's like whoa. that right now. I can't rock with the Bears right now. Are you saying in the Chicago clubhouse that you will be rooting? For the opponent, I, I'm calling. No, it. I did not say the opponent. I said Deshaun Watson. That's the opponent. The and let me let me explain the why. Opposing well, quarterback. Well, let let me explain why. He's exactly. a young black man. First off, oh, second off, really? the Bears the Bears totally just dismissed him. They didn't even talk to him. But he's before, paid. Before no, the I feel sorry for him. That yeah. man is paid. Yeah. Before the draft, that's they didn't just, even that's talk just to bad. him. That's just so, bad uh, for the Bears. Deshaun Watson I can't, is fine. I, I, can't, I can't rock with the Bears. Oh, well, then you should never rock with them then, not just this game. No, I can't rock with that, man. But actually, you know what? I'm sorry. My prediction is that I actually think the Bears are going to win. I was just uh, correcting your score there because I think the offense is going to score. I think – um, yeah, so I predict they're going to win. I mean, you know what? This is the type of game that they would win. The one that we totally are like, yeah, they definitely going to lose this. Like that Tampa Bay game. Yeah, like this is this is the. Like I I still don't think they'll lose out completely. No, like, I I don't see that happening. Um, and so I'll say it like I've said it the last two weeks. They're due, but I'm still, you know, I still kind of pick the Texans. But yeah, hey. Go Bears, bear down regardless. T Nick, man, I, I you know hurt my heart, man. I, I wish that they would have. Everyone thought they were going to get Deshaun. I wish they would have, but I mean, it's four years. It's it's time to move on. Oh, it's yeah, been time, man. and you know Deshaun Watson doesn't hold any ill will. He's paid. Uh, they asked Mitch about it. They're like, do you get tired of people talking about it? He's like, no, we were all drafted the same. Uh, I, they are doing great. I'm proud of their success. I wish them well. I'm still trying to write my story. They're writing theirs and doing well and getting paid. So, I mean, you know, Patrick wow. Mahomes did his count thing last year, but really they're all highly paid, paid more than they would have gotten paid here, even in an extension. So they're both in – well, Deshaun Watson's not in that great of a situation right now with players since he lost right. DeAndre Hopkins. Right. But they're both financially in way better situations than they would have been here. Those actual factuals. Yep. Lord Finesse.
and I'm yeah. still rocking with Deshaun. I mean, like Patrick Mahomes got drafted later, but he's like one of the highest paid. So and he won a Super Bowl. Yeah, year, so. and he's on Super Bowl path again. So he's like, yes, they go. they should be thanking the Bears that they didn't pick him. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because you think, you think uh, Patrick Mahomes will have a Super Bowl? But the Bears, they'd have found a way to fuck it up. You know, yes. <laughs> if they if if Ryan Pace would have drafted Patrick Mahomes, he definitely would not have pulled the move to get Khalil Mack. Um, you know, there would have been some other shit. Like, yeah, it, it, it wouldn't have. It, yeah, it, it would have balanced out in some other way. It's of, just it's the Bears' way. Point. Quarterbacks. Yeah, it's yeah. like wide receivers and quarterbacks come here to die. As uh, I think Musa Muhammad said that, that this is the place where wide receivers go to die um, because I mean, they don't yeah, have a, because there's no quarterback. There's a, they don't have a good enough quarterback. So mm. I, I think they still would, they would have been good quarterbacks because you would have always seen their potential. But like you say, it's, we mess things up here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I don't, yeah. So I, you know, I wish Patrick and Deshaun Watson the best. Uh, you know, I wish them long success. Not career. this Sunday. Oh no, this Sunday they can knock the hell out of Deshaun Watson. All I mean, day they long. don't hurt him, but I'm saying, I yeah, want, yeah, I don't want him knocked out the game and hurt, but they yeah. can knock him out. I, I want them to beat him though. I mean, oh come yeah, on. come on, T Nick, Jesus, what's going on? I'm rocking with Deshaun, man. Oh my god! All right, that's Deshaun's nail in his coffin because T Nick's rocking with him. Dun, 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 dun. He's just like out for the season, Deshaun Watson. He had like a mild like. I want him to stick it to the Bears, man, because you know the Bears just totally just overlooked him. Because oh, I mean, well, I I hate I hate to say this, but the the front office they 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 don't want no niggas in leadership, so they they chose this bum in number two and skip two of the most proven quarterbacks in the draft to get this bum. I mean, he was, I mean. Well, he, it, he but was, only one of them was, is actually he, a winner. I mean, all right. Okay, he won the national title. Fine. <laughs> but in the, in the, in the uh, no, national I'm, I'm kidding. Quality? Like, yeah, yeah. No, I'm kidding. He, uh, either one of them would have been the obvious choice for anybody would have. Uh, right. Uh, but, you know, it's like. To brain, keep, who wasn't a racist. Anyways. But to keep harping, it's. It's not going to make oh, it. All, all Bears fans who, they just make them, like, look at how miserable T-Nick is. All Bears fans who yeah. make themselves miserable still. I'm not miserable. Sure I'm just tell. not fucking with the Bears this week. Like, like pine, still pining for Watson and Mahomes, and it ain't happening, and they're not coming up soon in this draft. Who's uh, pining for Watson? No one's pining for them. I'm cheering for them, though. I am cheering for Deshaun Watson. But if you're still right. talking about him not being picked, you're pining too. You still wish that the Bears yeah. had him. Well, I'm right. not necessarily wishing they had him, but they skipped over him. So now I want him to stick it to them for doing that. Okay. But no, we, I'm not. We're pining. settled on that. We. It is what it is. It's fine. Now, um, T. Nick, how about some final thoughts? Uh. Well. We have Tommy Harris coming next week, man. I'm 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 charged up about Looking that. Forward to that, that's gonna be awesome. Yep, and and uh, let me give some quick uh, well, I don't call them shout outs, I call them rah rahs, but um, these are the people that are pretty much supporting us uh, as far as as far as advertising is concerned. Uh, the Chicago Bears fan page, Atlanta. Uh, that's Dawn. She's the admin for that. Keeping it 100, Phil and Shane, they're the admins for that. The Bears Nation, Robert and Chad. Uh, the Chicago Bears Den, Mr. D-Dub. Uh, Chicago Bears for Life, Aaron. Chicago Flag Football, Dedrick. We had Dedrick on the show. That's right. Uh, the Locker Room, Melody. And the UFU, that's Javin. And then, of course, the Chicago Clubhouse. All right, man. That's we us. We sincerely thank all of those people thank you. for, uh, you know, for supporting. And everybody's doing some really great stuff, 
you know, here this year and taking advantage of uh, connecting without being near each other. It's almost, you know, brought some of us closer in other ways we wouldn't have. So uh, shout out to those guys. And with that being said, uh, that ends our most current episode of the Chicago Clubhouse. Once again, this is the sports show where we think we know what we're talking about, but as you just witnessed by the last 15 minutes of your life, we don't know anything. I think we know less than we did uh, a couple of months ago. (laughs) And with that being said, (laughs) go Chicago. Thank you.